Okay. My name is Dr. Mrs. Shure Mekun. This is PCL 322 class. There are 60 participants. Okay, now I see 61 participants in class. We're going to be talking about pharmaceutical care and drug therapy problems. Wherever we get to within the one hour, but I believe within one hour we should cover it. So I'm going to be sharing my screen. Okay, can you see the screen now? Can you see the screen? Pharmaceutical care and drug therapy problems. That's what we will handle this morning. Okay. This is the outline. Just a second. Yes, just to block every form of interference that we could have. This is the outline where, this is the outline for all I'm supposed to take you on, pharmaceutical care, drug therapy problems, development and maintenance of patients, medication records, understanding prescription, the vetting, counseling and labeling. But for today, we're going to only look at pharmaceutical care and drug therapy problems. Yes, you are 300 level pharmacy students. What exactly, how much do you know about pharmacy? Maybe you've done, you've done 100 level, 200 level, so it's a bit of synthesis and the chemistry, you've done pharmaceutical chemistry, organic chemistry. You've done preparation of drugs and pharmaceutics, even if it is solution or suspension. You've done a bit of prescription order. Even if you haven't done that in class, you've seen prescriptions. You've gone to the hospital, you've received prescriptions. And you know that pharmacists are in charge of the dispensing of medications, medication services. You know you can walk into a pharmacy, a pharmaceutical chemist, a pharmacy, we call it, and medicines will be given to you. You can buy. You can buy what we call over the counter. So you can make a request and buy. You can get drugs on demand, which is maybe you have a prescription for it. So you present it to them. And then of course, you know about the use of medication. You have used medication. So that is what you know a brief summary of what you generally know about pharmacy. Now, you are in the Department of Clinical Pharmacy. Are we on? Department of Clinical Pharmacy, what is clinical pharmacy all about? Clinical pharmacy is defined as the branch of pharmaceutical science that deals with utilization of pharmacist knowledge, the skill and judgments, and is related to the pharmaceutical sciences. We use the skills related to all the knowledge that we have in biomedical and pharmaceutical sciences to provide safe, cost-effective, and precise drug usage in patient care precise drug usage. As we go on in some of the lectures, you will understand this definition better. The important point is that we're using pharmacy knowledge in patient care. The pharmacy knowledge in patient care. And we are focused on safe, 
cost effective and precise. When you get to dosage, you will understand what it means. Precise usage of drug in patient care. Now we'll look at pharmaceutical care, which we describe here as PC. Pharmaceutical care is a responsible provision of drug therapy to achieve specific outcomes. The patient comes to the hospital, he is, the doctor prescribes drugs. The pharmacist brings pharmaceutical care to bear in the provision of this therapy because certain outcomes must be achieved. One of the outcomes is care of the disease. The patient comes with malaria, you want to cure the disease. Or you want to eliminate or reduce the symptoms. The patient comes from an accident scene. There's a lot of pain. The doctor has prescribed an analgesic to reduce the pain. So you want to reduce the symptoms. You want to eliminate and possibly reduce. You want to arrest or slow the disease process. You know, it depends on the kind of disease condition the patient is presenting. Arresting or slowing of a disease process. Preventing a disease or symptoms. These are prevention uh, drugs. Drug therapy that gives prevention, like supplements, vitamin supplement, vitamin C. You want to prevent cold or such diseases. All these outcomes are positive outcomes. So the outcomes we hope to achieve in pharmaceutical care are positive outcomes. Later, you will understand why the emphasis on positive outcomes. Because there could be negative outcomes in drug therapy. You could take drugs and things turn out negatively. For example, if an overdose is taken, everybody knows that the outcome will be negative. Let's walk through it. We talked about positive outcomes. What could possibly lead to negative outcomes? or prevent the positive outcomes that we wanted. We set out to achieve positive outcomes. How come we now end up getting negative outcomes? One reason, the dosage could be too low, the dosage could be too high as in the case of poison, or I mean overdosage. Maybe an additional drug therapy is needed the person comes with a headache and we give analgesic and the headache goes away for a while and comes back again. So maybe the underlying disease is malaria, which we have not treated. I hope we understand. Then non-compliance means that the patient does not take the drug as has been directed. There could be an adverse drug reaction maybe allergic reaction. The drug produces another reaction in the patient that was not intended. Maybe the unnecessary drug therapy. The patient is taking a drug that is not indicated for what the person came for, or the drug is simply not working. As in the case of fake drug, if it's a fake drug, then it will not produce the desired effect. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Yes, ma. Very good. So we can continue. We'll look at <clears throat> operational definitions of pharmaceutical care. Pharmaceutical care involves the process through which a pharmacist works with a patient. In the past, pharmacist work was drug focused. We focus more on the drug. We want to be sure the drug is correct and all that. What pharmaceutical care moved is the era in which the pharmacist moves to patient focus. So not just the drug, 
but we we'll now look at the patient. Is the patient getting the right outcome? So PC is the process through which a pharmacist works with the patient and other professionals, the doctors, the nurses, in designing, implementing, and monitoring a therapeutic plan that will produce specific therapeutic outcomes for the patient. What are these outcomes? Some of them I have mentioned. <clears throat> the outcomes are supposed to be positive outcomes. You remember, we have mentioned positive outcomes. Healing, the, uh, curing the disease, reducing the uh, symptoms. So those are some of those positive outcomes or you reduce the progress of the disease, or you prevent the disease from coming. Now, there could be a, an outcome that we did not desire, an undesired outcome, that may result even from the drug therapy, from the treatment. This is why we focus and emphasize pharmaceutical care, because we know there could be some negative outcomes. So we want to be sure the patient gets the positive one. Now, in drug therapy problem, a pharmacist provides pharmaceutical care when she finds and resolves, resolves the drug therapy problem. The pharmacist has the responsibility to be, to be sure. If there's a drug therapy problem, we must find it. We must locate it and we must resolve it. So drug therapy problem is an unwanted outcome, is a negative outcome of drug therapy. Okay. So for pharmaceutical care, our aim is to optimize patient health-related activity. Now, PC is not the same thing as clinical pharmacy. Clinical pharmacy is the umbrella of all those things that we do as pharmacists that will bring our knowledge in to have, let the patient get a better outcome. But pharmaceutical care is just a branch under clinical pharmacy, okay? Pharmaceutical care is not patient counseling and it's not just the pharmaceutical services. These are all part of what we do. Patient counseling, for instance, is part of pharmaceutical care, but it is not just pharmaceutical care. Somebody says, what is pharmaceutical care? You say it's patient counseling. You are wrong. It is just an, a subset of pharmaceutical care. The goal is to optimize patient health-related activity. So what is pharmaceutical care proper? Three main functions. In pharmaceutical care, we identify potential and actual drug-related problems. If this person takes this paracetamol, is there a risk of a drug-related problem at this dose? Another main function of pharmaceutical care is to resolve actual drug-related problems. When you find it, you take steps to resolve it. <clears throat> the third function of pharmaceutical care is to prevent potential drug-related problems. You identify it, you prevent mm. it, and you resolve it if there is an actual problem. If there's no problem yet, it's our responsibility in pharmaceutical care to identify the potential. If somebody takes an overdose, I mean, you want to give analgesic, paracetamol, you want to be sure that the person is not taking overdose. If it's a child, for instance, you want to be sure that the actual dose is what is required, okay? 
So you I prevent it. You identify a potential. Say, ah, a mother wants to give uh, an analgesic to a child and takes a tablespoon. You have to cry out and say, no, that is not the correct measurement. The correct measuring tool. So we identify the potential straight away. If you find one, you resolve it. You also prevent, as in identifying the right tool for dispensing to children. These days you have uh, syringes that can measure five mils, 7.5 mils, 10 mils, depending on the weight of the child. Now children are treated more, their doses are based more on weight than on uh, age, a child can have a certain age and be underweight. So we have to re look at all this to prevent, to identify likelihood and to resolve. Those are the three main functions. What does the pharmacist really do in all this for you to even identify potential ones Identify actual and resolve. First thing we do is collect patient data. The pharmacist must collect patient data. In the collection of data, you identify the problem. When there's a problem, you now establish goals that you want to achieve through a good therapeutic plan. You evaluate treatment alternatives by monitoring and modifying therapeutic plan. If a patient is in the ward, for example, you identify the problem. Is it a drug reaction, adverse drug reaction? Is it an allergic reaction? What will be the goal? We want to eliminate that reaction. With the doctor, you evaluate a treatment alternative. As a pharmacist, you recommend another drug that will not produce that kind of reaction. And you then ask the doctor, you advise the doctor and agree together to modify the therapeutic plan. And for that uh, patient, you individualize the drug regimen. Maybe this patient is underweight, so the patient cannot use this uh, dose that, has, that is generally prescribed. You say, okay, based on the weight of this patient, a question patient, based on the weight, let's control the dose. Let's reduce, let's calculate the dose and individualize that dose for that patient. Then finally, we keep monitoring the outcome. That's why pharmacists are advised to do word round. But well, that's why they do word round. You keep monitoring the patient to ensure that the desired therapeutic goal is being achieved. <clears throat> now, medical problems versus drug therapy problems. A medical problem is different from a drug therapy problem, okay? A medical problem is a disease state. A change in physiology that potentially results in clinical evidence of damage to an organ or a system, even if it's just GIT. The, the, the GIT is disorganized and the person has diarrhea. <clears throat> it's a disease state. Okay, an example is diarrhea. If there is malaria in a system, there's a change in physiology, okay? The malaria parasites are in the blood. So something has changed, they are in the liver, something has changed. And then it begins to manifest the clinical evidence of fever, or either to an organ or to the system in general, it manifests as malaria, malaria fever. That is a clear, disease state. Medical problem is a disease problem. Now, the second one, drug therapy problem, it is caused by a drug. 
a patient problem that is caused by a drug, okay? And it can be prevented or treated by a drug. That's a drug therapy problem, usually caused by a drug. What would be an example? Does anybody know? I've mentioned allergic reaction severally today. You take a drug, in those days when you take, when we take chloroquine, chloroquine phosphate tablets, a lot of people itch. That's a drug therapy problem. So usually they give it with an antihistamine to prevent the itching. So that is a drug therapy problem. Okay. So you should be able to answer how does drug therapy problem differ from medical problem? Who in the healthcare system finds and fixes medical problem? Who in the healthcare system finds and fixes drug therapy problem? I'm going to pause briefly and allow you to answer at least one of these questions. Unmute, unmute yourself <clears throat> and answer the question. Does anybody want to have a go at it? Who in the healthcare system finds and fixes drug therapy problems? The pharmacist. Thank you. Bless you. And so question two, the doctor is supposed to find and fix medical problems. But all, both one and two are fixed by the medical team. The pharmacist may find it. Maybe they want to identify and say, this is a drug therapy problem. But the pharmacists, for example, when they're in the world, in the, within the healthcare as a team, cannot change the drug by himself or herself. The pharmacist will inform the doctor, the physician that prescribed the drug ab initio. So, and then they discuss. Most of the time, the physician will agree. Okay, let's change it. So it's a teamwork. The pharmacist, yes, finds it, but discusses with other members of the team, maybe even with a nurse that is administering the drug. So it could be, oh, we're withdrawing this drug from this patient. He has other drugs. So we want to remove this one. So the nurse has to be informed because it is the nurse that will administer the next uh, dose. Will administer the drug for the next routine time of treatment of taking their drugs. So the pharmacist, the physician, the nurse, the pharmacist works with the team. They might identify, they might find it, but they don't fix it by themselves. Unless you are working in a chemist, in a pharmacy, you are the one that gave the drug or the patient comes with that problem and you are able to recognize that it's a drug therapy problem. Then the pharmacist in a pharmacy, what you call pharmacy shop, in a pharmacy can then say, oh, stop taking this drug. It is this drug that is causing the problem. But within the hospital, it's a team. In the same vein, question two, who in the healthcare system finds and fixes medical problems? The physician diagnosis. Diagnosis and prescribes. The pharmacist dispenses the medication. If it's an outpatient, yes, and the pharmacist counsels on the use of the medication so that it does not result in drug therapy problems. So the medical problem was found, but who fixes is more than just the physician. If it's a patient in the ward, the nurse also is involved because they're the ones that administer medications. Okay, so let's go on. Let's see how far we can go. 
you have a case study there, we won't dwell on it. You are a pharmacist and Mrs. Abiola comes in and asks you to recommend an OTC sleep aid. So you don't just give an OTC sleep aid. You don't just say, okay, take the azepam, which you commonly call Valium, take Valium. But in the you interact with the patient. In the course of interacting with the patient, the pharmacist learns that her husband has recently passed away and she's not coping well. She's not able to sleep. So you know that it's probably a depression. So you maybe say, who is your physician? You call the physician and discuss with the physician and they can prescribe something for her because it might just be more than not being able to sleep. It might be a full scale depression. Okay, so we we'll move, let's move. We've discussed this. What is Mrs. Abiola's medical problem? What is her drug therapy problem? How do you contact the doctor and not appear to be practicing medicine? So let's quickly look at drug therapy problems. They within the limited 15 minutes that we have. Drug therapy problems are undesirable events. A patient experiences after and is suspected to involve drug therapy. And it interferes with the patient's desired outcome. DTPs are caused when or more of patients' need of drug therapy are not met. When one or more of the patients' need of drug therapy are not met. So there's a form. Uh, it's a PCNNE form, not PCN Nigeria. It's an internationally developed form that is used to identify drug therapy problems. So when you take a patient's uh, prescription, these are some of the things you look out for. Is the dosage too low? So you must know the dosage of the drug or you contact your reference books. Is the dosage too high? Does this patient need additional drug therapy? That means is there another condition you are identifying that you can pick that it looks like it's not being treated? You note it. Is it a question of non-compliance? That means the patient is not following instruction as given by the physician and communicated by the pharmacist. Is there an adverse drug reaction? Is the drug producing another reaction that is different from the medical problem. Is this an unnecessary drug therapy? For example, what can we, uh, add? which example can we give here? There's, there's a medicine that has been added to the th therapy for the patient and you don't see the need for it. Let's see, somebody has malaria, okay? And the PCV of the person is within range, is okay. The person is not anemic, but ferrous sulfate, drugs for anemia, blood tonic as we call it, has been added to the person's so you wonder, why is this person taking blood tonic when the person's PCV is okay? You know that, okay, this is a necessary drug. Or the person is on atomita lumefantrine and they are giving vitamin C. And we know that you don't take such antioxidants with atomita lumefantrine. You take it away or you recommend, you recommend to the physician so these are the DTPs that we look out for. Ineffective drug is the drug not producing the desired effect. Somebody has fever and you are given an antipyrexia 
That's what we call for fever, fever treatment. Fever is pyrexia. You give the antipyrexia and the fever is not reducing. So is it the drug ineffective? Is the dosage too low? You, these are the factors that you examine to arrive at a drug therapy problem. So how to identify? I've listed the things you look for. For you to conclude that it's a DTP, you ask certain questions. Four of them we have identified here. Number one, does the patient have an indication for each of his her drug therapies? You look at all the drugs on the prescription. Is there an indication for all these drugs? Or are we over-medicating mm -hmm. the patient? Okay, and is each of the patient's indication being treated? You'll also look at all the patient's indications, especially if you have, for, for you to do that, you must have the uh, records, the patient's rec medical records. These are the benefits of going on ward rounds for pharmacists. The second question you ask, are these drug therapies effective? Are they producing or re are they reducing the symptoms? Are they reducing the, or preventing additional ailments? You know, are they effective for the medical condition? Are the drug therapies as safe as possible? Okay, for this particular patient. Is the patient able and willing to comply with the drug therapies as instructed? Some patients will say, this tablet is too big, I cannot swallow it. They might open up to the pharmacist who comes around and discusses with them nicely. So if the tablet is too big, what do we do? You recommend that maybe, and the patient might say, I prefer injections. So is the patient able and willing to comply? I'd, I prefer a sustained release. I take one tablet in the morning and it covers me for the day. I cannot be swallowing every six hours or every eight hours. Can't you change it to something else? Mm -hmm. So are the drug therapies as safe as possible? Is the patient able and willing to comply? We ask those questions, okay? Like I mentioned much earlier, basic elements of pharmaceutical care is patient-oriented, okay? And it addresses both acute and chronic problems. It's not just for simple malaria and headache and uh, diarrhea. It's available even for chronic diseases. What do we call chronic diseases? Chronic diseases are diseases that are more or less treated for a lifetime. They're there for a long time. It's not a headache that you take the paracetamol and it goes. Acute will be a case of malaria, short term. Okay, I'm explaining all this because you are 300 level and you are yet to learn many things. The, uh, pharmaceutical care also emphasizes places an emphasis on prevention of drug, drug related problem. That means is that problem being caused by the drug? Let me see, what are you, I have a chart here, sorry, let me quickly look at it. Oh my gosh. Okay, somebody said, who is Mrs. Abiola? <laughs> Remember that one that we discussed? Who is Mrs. Abiola? Mrs. Abiola was just a patient that we, uh, we just used the name to, uh, depict a patient that came into a pharmacy. I hope the person is clearer now. I saw the question on the chat. So, our emphasis, these are the four basic elements. We emphasize prevention of drug-related problems. We document. Documentation is a very important part of pharmaceutical care. If the pharmacist does all that we've been talking about and does not write it down anywhere, it's a wasted effort. Document system on patient record. 
people on the need and the care that was given or that was recommended. Okay, so pharmaceutical care must be rounded up with documentation. If you don't document, then you didn't do it. Offering continuous care in a systematic way is not a one-off thing. You take help of other healthcare providers in integrating the care provider. You know, I kept saying it. The clinical pharmacist who is in instituting or introducing pharmaceutical care must integrate the other members of the healthcare team. Pharmaceutical care is highly accountable and responsible. You don't just do anything, anyhow, because you feel so. You must be ready to be held accountable for whatever you, the pharmacist must be ready to be held accountable for whatever, whatever he or she does. And the emphasis is also on optimizing patient health quality of life. Emphasis on patient health education and health promotion, especially when we're talking about prevention. Prevention of diseases, a lot depends on patient health education and health promotion. So what are those components of pharmaceutical care? One is the fact that it's the pharmacist-patient relationship. There must be a relationship between the pharmacist and the patient. You remember Mrs. Abiola when she came into the pharmacy? This case study we looked at, the pharmacist said on interaction with Mrs. Abiola, you know, after talking with her, there must be a relationship. You have to establish a relationship so the patient can share with the pharmacist. That's a personal relationship. And it must be done with empathy. Empathy is different from sympathy. I will leave you to find out the difference. So the second component is the pharmacist workup of drug therapy. Pharmacist workup of drug therapy. What is pharmacist workup of drug therapy? Data collection, you develop or identify the core, for core pharmacotherapy plan, identify the prime pharmacotherapy plan, and then you formulate a, what we call a farm or soap progress note. Uh, I think I will stop this class here now. Okay, so that next class, next week, by the grace of God, we will start from here. Okay, we will start from the essential components and begin to work on the work up of drug therapy, pharmacist work up of drug therapy. Because we're spending only one hour in this class. Um, Dr. Mrs. Ayeni is coming in to take another one hour from her own topic. So next week, we're starting from essential components of PC. So thank you very much. I will close. I will leave. Good morning, Ma. Good, Good morning, Dr. Ayeni. You are in? Yes, Ma. I'm okay. in, Ma. So I will leave now. Okay.